So the question is, is what do you need in order to learn PHP? Oddly enough, almost ironically enough, one of the things that I would say that you should do is go out and buy a book on how to code in PHP. I personally like Visual Quick Start Guides, FTC compliance. They don't sponsor me. They don't pay me. I don't get a dime for saying this. Uh, but I personally like the Visual Quick Start Guides. But if you don't go with the Visual Quick Start Guide, there's Sam's in 24 Hours. There's Peach Pit. There's a whole bunch of different uh, PHP coding books out, out there, and I would highly recommend you go out there and you buy a book on how to code in PHP. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm watching this, this track on how to program in PHP. There's other online resources. Why would I go out and buy a book now? That seems, that seems obsolete. And the reason is, is that books are a very good way of being able to see code laid out for you. So when you're coding, especially when you're learning, basically it's kind of like monkey see, mon monkey do, Simon says type of thing, where when you're writing code, essentially you see what the other person did, and then you write that out, and then just change it a little bit for whatever code that you're trying to do, whether you're doing for statements or loops or anything like that. And so what I've found is books just make life pretty easy because you can have all the code written out with the explanation right beside it, and you can see everything that you need to see in a very user-friendly fashion. Beyond that, in a book, it's very easy to use a highlighter or be able to write notes. It's easy to fold pages or put whole post-its in. Uh, to mark the different areas that you need. And I just find books to be very simple. So for me, if I'm going to be creating some kind of a little application, I can go in and I can put post-it notes in the book in the different areas for the things that I need. So let's say I need to, I need to be able to do an HTML form. I need to be able to connect to the database, and then I need to be able to send emails. So I can go in and I can put the post-it notes in those, those different areas. And then when I'm creating the form, I just flip to the form. And then I can, I can code for that. And then when I need to connect it to the database, I can flip to where the database information is. And I can do that. And then when I'm going to do an email, I can flip to the email section. And I just find books to be an incredibly useful tool for learning how to code. I know it seems obsolete. And, and, and again, I'm somebody that reads a Kindle. So I read my books normally on a Kindle. But I'm telling you, in coding, I think... Uh, I think books are just the bee's knees. I would really argue that you go out and you spend the 20 or $30 for a book, whether it's a visual quick start guide or whether it's something else. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need an environment to run the PHP code in. Do remember that PHP code is a server-side scripting language. So that means you need a server that you can install PHP on or that uh, PHP is installed on. And you also need an HTTP server or a web server component. So we're talking about Apache here. So you either need Apache, uh, IIS possibly, uh, uh, Nginx possibly. So you need one of those web servers and then you need to have PHP installed. So PHP is the interpreter for the code. So the web server presents the website to a browser and the PHP interpreter then goes in and it reads the, the PHP code and does whatever the PHP code needs to do. So if you want to be able to set up a server environment very easily, I would argue you should think about downloading and installing XAMPP, X-A-M-P-P. -P. So what this will do is if you have a Windows computer, a Linux computer, or a Mac computer, they have packages for the different major operating systems. You install it in one package, it'll install Apache for you. Well, I think it installs Maria DB, which is uh, basically a drop-in replacement for a MySQL. It will install PHP, and then it also installs Perl. But basically, this is a way to turn the, the computer that you're using into a web server so that you can run PHP and you can create websites uh, right off of your computer. You could also build your own web server if you want to. This is this is your own project if you want to do your own project. Uh, you can create a LAMP server, a Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP server. Go out there. There's there's a lot of different tutorials on how to do it. You could create a WAMP server, so the Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP server. You could create an IIS server, so you could create a server that way. And then your your desktop computer or your client computer would then 
basically what you would do is you would upload the PHP code to the server that you're using, and then you would run the code from that server. So that's one way to do it. One of the things that I suggest, I get a lot of pushback from people on this, but I really think it's one of the better ways to learn PHP, is to frankly spend the 3 to $5 a month on a shared hosting plan. So if you go to GoDaddy or you go to HostGator or whoever else, you can buy a shared hosting plan for 3 bucks or 5 bucks a month. That will run PHP. So whenever you buy a shared hosting plan, it gives you a whole bunch of uh, additional functionality. So you get the web hosting, but you also get PHP and MySQL, email accounts, and all that kind of thing. And so one of the things with these shared hosting plans is you can just sp spend that little bit of money, and then you have an environment that you know works. This is a very important thing when you're going to be learning PHP. Remember, in order to have PHP work, you have to have a lot of different systems all working together for the output to function properly. So if you mess up the firewall, if you do something stupid with the, the, uh, the Apache configurations, if, you, if you, set, you set up your own environment, but you don't know really how this stuff works. You don't really understand IP addresses. You really don't understand uh, permissions and that type of thing. One of the problems you can run into is that you think the problem is with your code. So you sit there and you write your code and you think it should work and then you keep going to execute the code and it keeps failing. And so then you spend days, you spend days rewriting the code. You write it once and then maybe you put the semicolon somewhere else and you spend days and days rewriting the code trying to figure out what you're doing wrong in PHP. One of the issues is you may not be doing anything wrong in PHP. There may be a permission issue with files and folders on your computer. There may be a firewall issue. There may be some other idiotic problem going on. And so you think your issue is with writing PHP when really the issue is something else entirely that you don't even know enough to go and try to troubleshoot. So one of my arguments for people that are really new, if you don't if you don't know how to swap hard drives, if you don't really know what a router is, you don't really know what a switch is, you don't really know what a default gateway is, I would argue go out and get a shared hosting plan, again, HostGator, GoDaddy, whatever else. Again, three, five bucks a month, because then you know you have an environment that works. You know the web server works. You know the PHP works. You know all of that stuff works. You can simply throw your PHP code up there. You can see that it does what it's supposed to do. And then you can focus on learning PHP code and not trying to troubleshoot shoot server issues. I know I get a lot of pushback. Why, why am I going to spend $5 a month? Let me tell you, let me tell you, spending five dollars a month and not have to worry about certain things uh, can be very valuable. So those are the different ways you can do it. You can either uh, install Zamp onto your computer and run it that way. You can build your own web server if you want to do that. I would argue you go with the shared hosting. One of the things I will warn you is if you install Zamp onto your own computer, again your Mac or your Windows computer, do realize you are installing a web server so that does have vulnerabilities. If you're worried about hacking, you're worried about security, do be careful because you're literally installing a web, a fully functional web server onto your 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 daily drive or your client operating system. And again, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you might run into some some security problems. Uh, beyond that, uh, one of the things you're going to need is, at a minimum, is an ASCII text editor. So I like Notepad plus plus. You can use Notepad. Basically, you can use anything that d does ASCII text. You can use something more complicated, a full fledged IDE, if you want to. But you just need all all you need is an ASCII uh, text editor. So you don't have to go out. You don't have to buy any expensive package in order to be able to code in PHP. Just anything that writes text and allows you to save into a .php uh, format. Uh, the final thing that you may need is uh, an FTP client. So if you're going to be um, running your own server uh, or if you're going to be using a shared hosting plan, which I would recommend in order to be able to upload your code uh, to that server or to that shared hosting plan, you will have an F you will need to use an FTP client, either something like FileZilla or something built into your operating system or such. And basically what that does is that allows you to take the PHP file from your computer and upload it, move it to the server. Now it is important to understand that if you were uh, running the web server off of the computer that you're using, you don't need an FTP client because you're 
actually on the computer. That's one of the benefits of running a XAMPP server off of your computer is the files, everything resides just right there on your computer. So you don't have to, you don't have to upload, you don't have to download. You're just dealing with the files that are sitting on your computer. So these are the things that you'll need uh, in order to be able to uh, learn how to do PHP. There is some other functionality, so certain things like mail servers. So there's a mail function that's very useful and very fun to play with. In order for that mail function to work, you have to have a functioning mail server. I'm not even going <laughs> to try to explain to you how to set up a functioning mail server. So this is one of the things to be thinking about is, again, it's, it's useful for uh, if you buy a shared hosting plan. So if you buy a shared hosting plan, things like the email server will work. So when you call the mail function, uh, that will simply work. Again, if you use GoDaddy or HostGator or any of those, it'll, it'll function out of the box. Um, but there is some function like that, like things like the email server functionality, the, the mail function, other things uh, that you may have to set up or may not work if you don't have things configured within your environment. But those are the basic things that you need in order to learn PHP. Again, overall, it's relatively easy. You don't really need to spend a lot of money to learn PHP or any, ha have any fancy equipment. If you have, if you have some crappy 15-year-old computer, you really can learn PHP and really learn how to use PHP well.